So, last time we kind of introduced this idea of uh, data management systems as addressing two problems, uh, two really high level problems. Uh, how do you uh, retrieve data efficiently and how do, you, uh, how do you update and manipulate data efficiently? And today we're going to start talking about uh, kind of the high level vision. Uh, what is a database uh, management system? Uh, what, what kind of approaches uh, do database uh, researchers, database developers uh, take to start addressing these kinds of problems? Uh, and we're going to do this through uh, by, by starting with uh, something called relational algebra. Yeah. So uh, just to open things up a little bit, uh, at the, la the end of last class and on Piazza, I put up a question uh, that asked, uh, gave a particular scenario. You're, uh, you have a data set that consists of a huge number of, uh, of tuples in an unordered set. And uh, these tuples are really, really wide. And you have a query workload that asks for specific records out of specific uh, entries in that set. Um, so I got, uh, there were a number of uh, very good responses on uh, Piazza. So let's actually go through some of them. Uh, the first one uh, from Bye Bob, I have. I apologize if I butcher people's names. Uh, I, uh, I'm horrible at pronunciation. So uh, if, if I mispronounce your name, uh, yell at me, shout out the correct name, please. Uh, uh, feedback, I need feedback, okay? Uh, so from uh, Vibe Have, uh, was a suggestion to order the tuples by uh, the first attribute, the attribute that we were doing the lookups on. Um, so why would that help? Anyone? Oh, come on. This is database 101 stuff. Why does it? Yes. OK, so if everything's sorted, I can do a search which takes log n, think, uh, which takes log n time uh, and the size of the list. Log n is way better than the linear search I'd need to find uh, all five tuples uh, beforehand. So great, sorting the list. That's one perfect way to uh, get the data into a form that is more amenable uh, to the query workload. Uh, from uh, Shubhadeep, uh, there was a suggestion that we uh, store the data column-wise. Uh, what does that mean? Anyone know? Anyone ever heard the term column-wise? Has anyone ever heard the, yes? Can you speak up a little bit? Uh, okay, so separate, <coughs> excuse me, um, separate all of the attributes so that each attribute is stored uh, with other, uh, with values of the same attribute from different tuples. So for example, store it rather than storing it as a tuple of uh, a, a list of tuples, you store it as a tuple of lists. Um, why would that help? Yes. Okay, great. So uh, by storing all of the attribute values together, I don't need to look at quite as much data. Now, I mean, the cost of uh, looking at one attribute versus looking at 100 attributes is, in general, going to be fairly minimal. Uh, but multiply that by a million uh, rows or uh, by a billion rows, uh, and suddenly that little, little uh, uh, advantage that you get from only looking at one attribute rather than looking at all of the attributes uh, is going to uh, start paying off. So uh, it's potentially going to. <coughs> so storing the data column-wise is one way to uh, one way to get better performance. 
Uh, and the last one from uh, Madni uh, was a suggestion to uh, build uh, a map. And there's some discussion about whether it should be a tree map or a hash map uh, or the specific implementation of this. But uh, once it, but the suggestion was to build a map with the attribute as the first key. Uh, so how, how would that compare to the, uh, the other approaches that we, yes? Okay, so if it was a hash map, uh, the lookup times would be uh, order one. Uh, yeah, um, and if it was, so there, there's potentially some cases where uh, this is a great idea too. So here's my question to you. We have a couple of different options, each of which uh, addresses the problem at hand. Which of these should we use? The third? Hmm? Uh, speak. OK, you used a word. And it, it's a word that, uh, that I'm going to use throughout the entire rest of the class. It depends. Uh, Everything in this class is about dealing with situational uh, events. And so memorize this because it's going to be uh, super important. There is never a correct answer. Uh, it's always, <coughs> there may be some wrong answers, but there's almost never a correct answer for which data structure, which layout uh, is correct to use in a given circumstance. Uh, because there are lots and lots of variables, and which of those variables becomes relevant uh, sometimes doesn't uh, come up until you're actually accessing the, the data, until it, uh, you're actually querying the data. And so all of these representations, uh, they're equivalent in some ways. Uh, they give us the ability, they're, they're all representations of a set of tuples or a set of uh, attribute value pairs. Uh, so with respect to correctness, any of those uh, would work out. But there are some situations where one of the data structures or one of the, the physical representations uh, is better. And there are some situations uh, where a different one might be better. So we talked a little bit about restrictions, schemas, and these kinds of things. Uh, and the core, the, the, the thing I want you to get out of this is that these kinds of restrictions, uh, if our knowledge about the data that we can use to find these equivalencies. And another one of these running themes that you're going to see throughout the rest of the class uh, is this idea of taking one thing and finding something else that's equivalent to it for some definition of equivalence, uh, but better in some way. Uh, so really the, the uh, two... Uh, Kind of orthogonal questions that we'll be looking at uh, with respect to this are first, how can we figure out whether something is better? And how can we figure out uh, whether a potential replacement is equivalent? Or what, what do we mean by equivalence? OK. Um, so let me kind of start off uh, the, the actual discussion today with uh, a couple of definitions. I just want to get these, uh, these are things that you probably have encountered in one form or another. Uh, I just want to make sure that we're talking about the same things, uh, that when I say uh, an instance, uh, you know what I mean. So uh, let's start with uh, relational databases. Now, I know relational databases might be uh, somewhat passe. I'll give a little bit of justification for why we're using them. Uh, but I, uh, there's a couple of uh, terms with respect to a relational database that I want to make sure uh, we're all uh, talking about the same thing. Uh, so a relational database consists of a set of tables. Uh, and each table consists of a schema describing uh, the table's contents, uh, as well as uh, an instance that uh, actually says what the contents of that table are. So, excuse me, uh, not table, relation. Well, table and relation are essentially the same thing. Uh, Every relation is broken up into a set of uh, rows and a set of, uh, sorry, a set of columns. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, a set of columns. Uh, and the number of columns we sometimes refer to as uh, either the degree or the arity of the relation. Uh, and the schema specifies a name for each of these uh, columns. Uh, the, ta uh, the relation is also contains a set of rows, a variable number of rows, and the number of rows we sometimes refer to as the cardinality 
of uh, the relational database. And this is basically where the actual data lives. OK, uh, feel free to refer to this slide. I'll post it up on Piazza. But this is basically just a bunch of definitions that I want to get out of the way. Uh, now, the relational model is uh, the reason that I'm going to be basing a lot of this class around the relational model isn't that it's the one solution. This isn't uh, the thing that you use for every single application. Uh, as I said, uh, a lot of this class boils down to the question uh, or to the answer, it depends. Uh, the relational model is one specific uh, tool, and it cap it's a tool that captures uh, a wide variety of different principles that can be further generalized. So this is kind of like the, the base case in, in a more complex uh, analysis. It covers collections, it uh, covers tuples, it uh, covers primitive values, and it covers operations that uh, interact with all of these. And it becomes very easy to generalize uh, once you have kind of this, this basis. Uh, but even apart from that, uh, this tabular data is still extremely common. I mean, I, I'm sure you've all encountered CSV files, Excel spreadsheets, log files. This is all data that essentially boils down to something that's uh, more or less uh, tabular. Uh, and relational data is essentially one way of expressing all of this. So it's a base case, but it's a very powerful base case, and it's one that covers, uh, that has huge impact uh, already. And this is the basis for SQL, Pig Latin, R, all of these things basically operate off of uh, the relational model or some simple variant of it. OK, so we're going to be using the relational model. Uh, and I'll describe that a little bit uh, in the coming lectures. Uh, the other kind of definition I want to get out of the way is this idea of declarative languages. Uh, so a declarative language, uh, the, the way that this is typically described, is a declarative language allows the programmer to say what they want rather than how they want it computed. Uh, so as an example, uh, come along to my database and say, get me the TPS reports. Anyone, uh, hands up anyone who get, gets the reference. Oh, not enough. Watch Office Space. Good movie. Um, in an imperative language, uh, I'd typically say, uh, I, I'd have to say specifically, OK, fetch all of the uh, T reports. And then for each of those T reports, uh, go through it and uh, then you know, sum up uh, some value. Uh, you basically go step by step and say exactly the, the steps that you take uh, to perform the computation. And uh, the advantage of a declarative language is that uh, by not saying how you want a value computed, it makes it a lot easier to explore different options. Uh, again, this, this point of equivalence. Uh, a declarative language allow, gives you the freedom to kind of explore a variety of different equivalent ways of computing the data, uh, the, the values that you're looking for. OK, bunch of definitions. I know uh, this is me yammering at you guys, I'll try and make the rest of the lecture a little more interactive. Uh, so far, are there any questions? All right. OK, so the, let's, get, uh, let's start taking a look at uh, the course project. And why do I say that? Um, the first part of this class, we're going to be talking about query processing, uh, the first of the two questions that I described. How do you efficiently access data? And this is all captured basically in the project that you're going to be doing over the course of uh, the term. So let me, uh, let's start out with that. How do you build a query processor? Well, I mean, at one end, you have uh, data kind of comes in, you have SQL queries that come in, and at the other end, you have query results. So what goes in the middle? Now, the language that comes into a typical query engine uh, is SQL or, or something like SQL. Basically, this 
a declarative set of statements that describe uh, some computation. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, in terms of the project, uh, you guys are going to be getting a library called JSQL Parser that basically takes the text document uh, and produces some structured representation of SQL. Uh, this is known as parsing. Uh, and it's essentially, what is that, five lines of code. Five, six, six lines of code. Um, really straightforward if you have a library for it. Not very difficult. Um, once, but, okay, so we, we have this uh, structured representation of, of the, the query. Now what? Now what do we do with that? Well, I mean, conceptually, what we want to do is we want to take that structured representation of the query, combine it with the data, and produce some results. Okay. Is this the entire picture? Are, are we done? Can we go home? We just implement this and just call it a day? Yep. Okay, so there's uh, questions of correctness. And uh, one thing that you would discover very quickly if you tried implementing uh, just this is that evaluating SQL is a pain in the butt. Uh, SQL is a messy language and has a lot of corner cases, a lot of weird features that are conceptually straightforward, but a pain in the uh, in the butt to implement. So a typical compiler isn't, even for languages other than SQL, isn't going to start with, uh, isn't going to just directly evaluate the, the SQL query. Um, typically, what you'll see in most compilers is something called an intermediate representation, uh, some sort of uh, representation of the query that's equivalent, but a lot easier to work with, uh, both to optimize and to uh, analyze. So, what's in the box? Well, uh, for, uh, with respect to uh, relational data, this kind of tabular data, uh, there have been a couple of different models that, uh, a couple of different kind of languages that people have uh, discussed for, uh, for using, uh, that people have come up with uh, for uh, implementing this kind of internal representation. Uh, the two most common ones are relational algebra and relational calculus, uh, both of which have uh, advantages, disadvantages. Uh, just for the purposes of uh, this class, relational algebra is actually a lot, conceptually a lot simpler to work with. So for now, we'll be focusing on that. Uh, time permitting, we'll come back to relational calculus later on in the, the term. Um, so a few more defini uh, quick definitions. Uh, relational algebra expressions are all queries. They're all uh, representations of some uh, set of records, uh, each of which has a fixed schema and uh, a fixed set of, uh, uh, and a number of rows containing the data. So a query uh, works on any kind of uh, input relation. And the main kind of gimmick of relational algebra is that any query in relational algebra is also itself uh, a relation. So I can talk about uh, applying a query to a, an input relation, and the output has exactly the same, uh, is also a relation. It's also something that we can query. And this basically makes uh, relational algebra expressions composable. One last definition, or sorry, two more uh, definition slides. Uh, I like Star Trek. Uh, if you know Star Trek, feel free to giggle along. Uh, if you don't, this is just data. Um, I have a couple of different uh, relational instances right here that we're going to be working with, just as uh, a set of examples. Uh, some uh, captains, some locations, and some first officers. All right, so what is relational algebra? Well. You're basically looking at it. It's a set of operators that describe a couple of common data transformations that you apply to any relational instance, that you can apply to any relation. 
Um, and basically, my goal for today is to go over uh, as many of these as I can and give you a sense of what uh, each transformation entails and kind of the semantics of, of each of these operators. Uh, once again, I just want to emphasize that each of the operators is applied to one or more relations, uh, but the output of an operator is also a relation, so you can kind of compose the, the operators together. And this, uh, in formal jargon, this, is, this uh, means that relational algebra is closed, or what, what uh, uh, set theoreticians call closed, a closed relation. All right, so let's take a look at each of these. Uh, first operator, really straightforward, uh, is called projection. Uh, so projection basically takes uh, an input relation with some schema, and it projects away uh, all of the columns not in some list. It uh, projects, if you're familiar with, um, uh, with three-dimensional uh, cartography or, or something like that, uh, same basic idea. You're, you're taking multiple attributes and you're cutting it down to smaller number of attributes. Um, OK, so simple example. I have a uh, projection here that uh, is applied to the captain's relation. What would I expect to get out of this? Last name and ship. Hmm? Last name and ship. Uh, so I basically get the last name and the ship of all of the captains. Uh, sorry, there is a input row. Oh, no, that's it. Um, what if I projected, uh, what if I ran this projection? What would I expect to get? I mean, I'd get the rank column. What would the data look like? Sorry, there's a typo in the, that. I'll fix it in the, when I post it on Piazza. The, uh, there is one extra row in the output. That's, that's correct. So what about, uh, what if I projected uh, first officers down uh, to, to that? Hmm? Oh, uh, sorry. Um, oh, man, uh, the, my, sorry. What you're seeing on the right side, the upper right side, is the uh, the first officers table. Uh, I project captains. I get the last name and the ship. Uh, those two are distinct. Uh, what would I expect to see if I projected uh, the first officers table, which you see in the upper right corner, uh, down to rank? Just the ranks. How many rows would I see? Four, or two? Why? I, I, I'm hearing four, and I'm hearing two. Why? Why would I get two? That's the more interesting one, I think. Hmm? Ah, so there are two distinct values, and there are four distinct rows. And so this is, uh, this is kind of weird, right? Um, there are actually, I'm going to be talking about relational alg algebra as if it's kind of one big monolithic thing, uh, but there's actually uh, two variants of relational algebra. Uh, one that operates on what are called bags, or uh, sometimes multi-sets, and one that operates on just sets. Uh, set of records uh, would essentially mean that I have to eliminate duplicates. So if I have uh, two different copies of 2.5, or in this case, if I have three different copies, uh, all of those kind of coalesce into one output. There are two distinct values. And that's known as set relational algebra. Um, if I have four different, uh, if I instead actually want one copy of that 2.5 for every output row, uh, for, sorry, for every input row, then that's known as bag relational algebra. Um, in terms of the project, we'll probably be, uh, excuse me, we'll, we will, in terms of the project, uh, bag relational algebra is uh, the one that you should be considering. Okay, 
So queries are relations. Uh, what's the schema of this projection? Just a quick question to make sure you're all following along. I have an input schema. I have an output schema. Hmm? Last name. OK. OK. So that's projection. Projection, you know, pretty straightforward. It's a little more complex if you have uh, if you're working with sets, but uh, if you don't need to do de 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 excuse me deduplication, then uh, pretty straightforward. What about selection? Um, so selection is the other really straightforward relational operator, and the idea is that you delete any rows that don't satisfy a given uh, condition on the the data, sometimes called filtering. Um, OK, so I run this, uh, I pick out all of the captains with uh, rank less than 3.5, and I'm going to get a set of, uh, of captains. And you can see that all of the captains that I have here have rank less than 3.5. Now, kind of the main gimmick. Uh, as I keep saying of relational algebra, is that I can compose expressions together. So I can take a projection and I can take selection and I can squish them together and I can get a, a new expression that gives me the last name of every single captain with a uh, rank greater than 3.5. Again, uh, so far we're talking about fairly straightforward things. Now, there, the projection operator behaves differently depending on whether we're talking about bag or set relational algebra. Is that the case for the selection operator? Uh, do I need, uh, is there any case where I'd need to worry about duplication? Can you speak up? OK, so assuming that I had a set as my input, because if I'm working with set relational algebra, all my inputs are going to be sets, and I apply a selection predicate to that set, can I get something that isn't a set as an output? Ah, okay. So if if my input contains duplicates, then I need to do something. But um, so if I'm working with uh, set relational algebra, all then everything that all of my data is in the form of a set. If I'm working with bag relational algebra, then all of my data is potentially in the form of of a bag. Now with projection, uh, if I had a set as even if I had a set as input. After I apply a projection, I could get a bag as output, which means I need to do deduplication. Is that the case for selection? If I have a set as input, could I possibly get a bag as output? Yes? So, I mean, when you don't have any primary keys in the attribute place, the selection operator, when you don't have any attribute which has unity, you can be fine. OK, so if I'm. If all I'm doing is deleting things, well, I can't add another thing that's uh, another uh, data point that's a duplicate of something I already have, because all I'm doing is deleting rows. In the case of projection, I'm deleting columns, and if I delete a column that distinguishes two different rows, or that allows two different rows to be distinguished, well, that could potentially introduce duplicate duplicates. But if I'm just deleting rows, uh, there's no difference. So Selection operates the same in bag and set relational algebra. Uh, also, how does uh, selection uh, affect the schema of its output? It doesn't affect it at all. Yep. Oh, whoops. I'm going ahead here. Uh, uh, yes? What if we project rank phi of rank? Mm -hmm. So the question is, uh, 
what happens if I if there are multiple if I project something uh, project a data source down to uh, sorry uh, if I project the captain's relation down to rank and I have multiple captains of uh, rank four uh, what hap uh, the same thing that would happen with the that happened with the two point five uh, if I project something down I need to eliminate duplicates if I'm working with set relational algebra. Uh, I don't need to remove duplicates if I'm working with bag relational algebra. Because well, set, I need to make sure that all of my data sources are sets. Uh, bag, relational algebra, everything is a, can have duplicates. You're allowed to have duplicates. Yes? Ah, but we haven't talked about merging stuff yet. I'm glad you asked that, though. Because that's next up. Uh, okay, so uh, union, uh, the next set of operations, uh, and I'm going to kind of squish these together uh, union intersection and set difference. Um, union is going to take uh, two different input relations uh, that are what's called union compatible. And what I mean by that, they have the same schema. Um, both relations have the same set of attributes. And a union uh, in set relational algebra is going to return uh, every tuple that exists in at least one of the two uh, source relations. So if I unioned uh, captains and first officers, I'd get uh, the table up there. But let's uh, go back to the um, example sl data slide. Uh, you'll note that uh, Kieran Arise appears in both captains and uh, and first officers. A couple of episodes where she's a captain. Um, and in that case, and if we're working with uh, set relational algebra, we need to make sure that, uh, that only one copy of that tuple makes it through uh, the query. So you, as you can see, there's only one copy of Kirina Reese in this output. We were working with, yes? Uh, did, question? Uh, if we're working with set relational algebra, the tuples need to be unique. If we're working with bag relational algebra, uh, then this would have two copies of Kirin Yes? Ah, okay. I'm sorry. I've been using this term bag, and I have not defined it yet. Um, the term bag uh, refers uh, is also uh, referred to as a multi-set. In other words, a set, uh, it is... It has similar properties to a set, uh, but a tuple can appear multiple times. So in this case, if I had two copies of Kieran Arise, uh, Kieran Arise would be a member of this set, but it would also be a, it, there would be two copies uh, of Kieran Arise. Uh, you can think of a, uh, a bag as a set, except each tuple also has a count attribute or is associated with a count attribute. So when you do a membership test, you get the count uh, in addition to a Boolean yes, no. Does that answer your question? Uh, any other, uh, does everyone get, uh, uh, are there any other questions on uh, you know, terms that I've been using? Uh, is there anything that's unclear? Yes. Uh, how do you, the question is, how do you distinguish between bag operations and set operations? Uh, so the, the, dis in, the assumption in bag relational algebra, actually, let me back up. The assumption in set relational algebra is that all of the inputs, all of the relations in set relational algebra are sets. All of the relations in bag relational algebra are bags. Uh, so if I'm talking about set relational algebra, that's one portion of the world. If I'm talking about bag relational algebra, that's a completely separate portion of the world. Uh, I'm describing both to you here so that you know uh, the difference. Typically, when one talks about relational algebra, you're talking about set relational algebra. But I'm making uh, the distinction for bag relational algebra clear because 
uh, bad relational algebra is typically easier to work with. And bad relational algebra is uh, typically what, ha uh, what a relational query engine uses because duplicate elimination is a sl very slow process. Any other? Yes? Yes, so the, the assumption with set relational algebra is that any operator that could introduce duplicates has to check for duplicates, or has to check and eliminate duplicates. So that's projection, uh, union as we see here, uh, but not selection. Well, it's the the oper to be implemented correctly. The operator uh, can a set relational operator can assume that its input is a set, and assuming that its input is a set, there are some operators that could introduce duplicates just by the the. Be, uh, the way that they behave. So uh, a projection can introduce duplicates. Union can introduce duplicates. Uh, selection, on the other hand, uh, if its input is a set, its output is guaranteed to be a set without any additional checks. Does that address? Any other questions? Yes? So with bag relational algebra, you don't need to make uh, any guarantees about uh, duplicates. And that's why the project's going to be using bags. Uh, with set relational algebra, so remember at the very beginning, I uh, introduced this idea of composability, uh, that you could the output of a relational operator is uh, a relation, the same as the input, right? Um, so in set relational algebra, you're try, uh, in addition to trying to preserve uh, the, the structure, in, in addition to making the output a relation, uh, any kind of properties, uh, set relational algebra enforces the property that all relations are sets. So uh, you could potentially have some combination of bag projection, set projection, We'll get into this a little bit later in the term uh, when I start talking about an extended form of relational algebra. Uh, right now, right now we're. Uh, I just want to kind of get the the basic uh, the basic set of operators and the basic set of operator. Oh, sorry, the basic uh, operators either try and enforce this property that inputs are uh, that uh, all of the relations are sets or. Or they don't. And if they don't, it's bag relational algebra. Does that address your question? Or Yes? Can you speak up a little? OK, so you're using a term. Uh, the, the question is, does it mean that if you have a bag, tuples don't have primary keys. Uh, so the term primary key is uh, one that I haven't started talking about yet. We'll get into that a little bit later as well. Um, for those of you who are, are familiar with primary keys, you can think of a set as a, uh, a relation for which all of the attributes are the primary key. In other words, it's unique for all of the attributes. Uh, and a bag is a relation with no primary key. And a primary key is basically a way of making uniqueness properties a little more fine-grained. Uh, again, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the term. But uh, you're allowed, you either are allowed duplicates or you aren't allowed duplicates. And uh, all I'm trying to get across here is that uh, some operators can potentially introduce duplicates, and some operators can't. Any other questions? Yes. So 
So the question is, if the same row exists in both first officers and captains, uh, how does that translate into the output? Um, and that depends on whether using, you're using bags or sets. If you're using bags, you'd want to see two rows in the output, one for each input. And if you're using sets, you see one output, because that tuple exists in at least one of the two input sources. Does that address your question? It depends on whether you're working with sets or bags. OK. Uh, so union combines two sets uh, or bags. Intersection. Oh, oops. Intersection, uh, well, intersects two things. It gives you every single tuple that exists in both relations. Uh, is this something we need to care? Uh, do we care about duplicates here? Can this introduce duplicates? No. The last one, this one's kind of weird, set difference. This returns every tuple that is in one relation, but not the other. So delete every, uh, this is essentially delete everything uh, that is in the intersection. Um, again, can this introduce duplicates? No, because at most it will be in uh, what is in one of the two relations. OK, so there's an input, there's an output. Uh, what does the output schema look like here? It's the, yeah, the, the two input schemas are the same. The output schema is exactly the same as the two inputs. Just checking if you're awake. OK, uh, the last of these operations, or the last of the, the basic operations, uh, is one called cross product. Uh, so cross product uh, is an operation that you'll hopefully never really need to use. Uh, it's, it takes every single input in one of the two relations and for every input row in one of the relations, it basically pairs up two, uh, excuse me, it pairs up input rows from two different relations. So it'll take every uh, row in one relation and every row in the other relation and it'll pair them up. So here we have, uh, what is that, uh, four different copies of Spock because there are four different locations. Uh, we have four different copies of uh, William Riker because, again, there are four different locations. And you can think of this as matrix multi uh, not matrix. Uh, you can think of this as, uh, if you're familiar with programming languages, the Cartesian product. Uh, so, so refer to that as that here. Um, it basically takes every pair of every possible pair of relations. Yeah. That is a great question. Um, how do you, the question is, how do you distinguish the two ship columns? And in this particular case, the output schema is going to be the concatenation uh, or the union of the two schemas. I shouldn't use union. The concatenation of the two input schemas, which means that now we have two different copies of the ship column. Um, so we're going to need to introduce a little bit of a syntactic operator as well, uh, one called renaming. Uh, so this is sometimes uh, uh, uses the row symbol. And this basically, uh, you can identify columns in a schema both by their location in, uh, in the schema as well as their name. So if you have two different ship columns, uh, you might want to uh, rename some of the, uh, some of the columns in order to, uh, excuse me, you might want to rename some of the columns uh, so that they have unique names. Uh, typically, this would be applied uh, earlier in the pipeline. So oh, re renaming, simple operator. Now, uh, yes? Uh, sorry, uh, can you speak up? The 
the number of tuples should be the same as in the input. Uh, what do you mean by the, the same? Here, let me go uh, over here. Uh, what's, uh, what was the question? It doesn't need, uh, the number of tuples uh, of tuples in the uh, input sources don't need to be the same. Uh, they just happen to be in this case. Uh, but if I had three locations, then I'd have three rows for Spock, three rows for Will Riker, three rows for Kirin Reese, and so forth. Um, and in general, if I have n rows in one relation and m rows in the other relation, I end up with n times m rows in the output. Does that address your question? Yep. Mm-hmm. But uh, I mean, there I can understand I myself uh, specifically as Yasser. Mm -hmm. But here you have chosen suddenly the row as uh, O of ship and uh, L ship. Yeah. But I it's essentially aliasing. This is. Uh, this operator isn't necessary for correctness. Uh, if you. Uh, I mean, there, there are a number of ways that you can uniquely identify uh, conflicting columns. Uh, I could give left-hand side ship, right-hand side ship as, as a default. Uh, this is just a way, uh, a syntactic convenience for readers uh, to help follow along with these weird case, corner cases. Uh, usually you won't see renaming in uh, implementations of relational algebra because it's unnecessary. Uh, again, I'll, I'll get into a slightly more complex form of uh, relational algebra in a week or so that uh, has a slightly more powerful projection operator that actually encompasses this as well, or that obsoletes this. Okay, now, cross product. Uh, any, oh, any other questions, by the way? Yes? That is a great question. And in fact, the answer is almost never. Uh, cross product is a primitive operation, uh, but it is, it is a primitive operation that usually or almost always doesn't, uh, there, there are a couple of corner cases, uh, but in general, cross product is almost always combined with a selection operator. So I'm not usually looking for all pairs from two relations. I'm looking for specific pairs from two different relations. And so in this case, I have two ship columns. Uh, well, why are those ship columns there? Well, one is saying that uh, this is a first officer on a given ship, and the other is saying that there is a ship at a given location. So one thing that I might want to ask about this data is where is a given first officer located? Or where is a given officer's first, uh, a given first officer's ship located? Uh, so typically, uh, so if, if that's actually what I'm interested in, I'd put a uh, selection predicate on there, and most of the rows would just go away because they're not relevant to my output. Um, now, this is uh, such a common operation, and in fact, cross product in general is uh, so in common, uh, uncommon, excuse me, that relational algebra has a way of talking about this kind of combination of a selection and a cross product. And I'm sure uh, any, many of you have heard the term join. That is basically what a join is. Take every pair, uh, test a given predicate, and if, it, uh, if something satisfies that given predicate, uh, then uh, put it in the output. So a join works almost exactly like a cross product, except it only returns a subset of rows that match a given predicate. Um, now, the advantage to this, in addition to producing fewer outputs, is that typically a join can be uh, computed much more efficiently. Oh, wow. Uh, all right, so uh, we are out of time. Uh, where are we? We are out of time. Um, however, I believe we have covered enough uh, to introduce this idea of division. I'll put, uh, yes? 
Uh, I'll get back to joins uh, at the start of next lecture, but uh, if you have a quick question. Uh, what do you mean by e less than or equals? Oh, the subscript uh, FO rank as less than C rank uh, depends on what the query is asking for. Um, I'll, that's a great question, though. I, uh, the, so the question was, uh, do we want it uh, in a join? Do we want to use an equal sign or a less than sign? There's actually a specific kind of join called an equi join. I'll get into all of this uh, next lecture. Um, however, I've covered enough uh, to introduce an idea of division. Uh, I'll post something on Piazza, uh, check Piazza, post. Uh, there should be, it'll be a little simple uh, exercise for you guys to do. Um, with that, thanks a lot. Uh, they are all, uh, slides for lecture one are on Piazza, slide for lecture two will be on Piazza. Slides will be up after the lecture. <laughs>